All right, so how about this problem? We want to determine the enthalpy of liquid water at 100 degrees C and 15 M MPa, and we have a few different options. All right, so, so this isn't a real problem. We're just looking at some property tables, looking and seeing um, all the different ways we can find enthalpy. All right, so uh, because it's water, uh, we have uh, compressed liquid tables, table A7. So maybe it's in our property table, 100 degrees C, 15 MPa, let's go to our property tables. Uh, it's water, so I'm looking at four, five, six, seven. It's compressed. And actually, if I didn't already know it was liquid water, I would go to the saturated table and it would tell me that temperature's too low uh, for at, at 15 MPa. Or it's, it's uh, that pressure is too high at 100 degrees C. Uh, so it, it would send me to table A7. We haven't used table A7 too much. Uh, but we've got a pressure of 15 MPa, so right here. We've got a temperature of 100 degrees C. We don't even have to interpolate. Uh, the H value right here, 430.39. Uh, 430.39. So go to our uh, so table A7 at, at a temperature of 100 degrees C and pressure pressure of 15 MPa. Uh, take those table A7. I would get a, uh, what am I looking for? H, uh, what do we say? 430.39 kilojoules per, per kilogram. Kilojoules per kilogram. So uh, we are, this is specific enthalpy. Um, I don't think there would be a way to find the total enthalpy because I don't think we have the mass uh, I don't think we have enough information. We don't have the volume. Uh, maybe with volume and, and specific volume, we could get the mass, but we weren't told the volume. All right, so let's leave that in specific enthalpy. All right. What if we had approximated it as a saturated liquid? So if we went to table A, uh, well, should we go to table A4 or table A5? Um, we approximate it at a, as a saturated liquid. Should we estimate it F? H F at the temperature or H F at the pressure? Uh, no, at the temperature. Remember, if we don't didn't have compressed liquid property tables, uh, we could estimate our values at the temperature. So I'd estimate it at 100 degrees C. So that this would be table A4, temperature of 100 degrees C. Let's go to our property tables. Table A4, the temperature table. At a temperature of 100 degrees C, the H would be, is that it? Yes, 419.17. 419. Sorry, 0.17 kilojoules per kilogram. All right. Okay, but part C, what if we use that correction factor? And they even gave us this equation. H is equal to HF plus VF times P minus P set. H, uh, H equals HF plus VF times P minus P set. Well, we'd say, okay, well, uh, let me take that 419.17 and let me correct it by, uh, so this is at the temperature, this is at the temperature. The V at that temperature, that was on the property table, 0 0.001043. Very small, a very small value, right? Maybe this doesn't correct it very much. 0 0.001043 meters cubed per kilogram, um, and times the P that we're at, 15 MPa minus P sat. What is P sat at that temperature? At the temperature, the temperature was 100 degrees C. The P sat, 101 kPa. 101 kPa. We're at 15 MPa. That's a pretty big difference. Right, so that's this is going to be a pretty big value right here. If I take 
15 MPA, let me say 15,000 KPA minus 101.42 KPA. So, so that's a very large, uh, that's a very small number. When we multiply them together, uh, maybe it does make a little bit of a difference. And it does. I would get 434.07 kilojoules per kilogram. So we, this, I'd say, is the most accurate value. Um, if we guesstimate it at the saturated, saturated liquid property value, uh, we'd guess at 419, which is, you know, about, what, 11, 11 off from the correct answer. Um, if we use our correction factor, we overshoot a little bit, but now we're within under 4, right? So, so it helped a little bit. Uh, and it was because we had such a large pressure compared to our saturation pressure. All right. So anyway, there are a few different ways to find the enthalpy right here.